Hi. <laughs> Thank you for sticking to the end. Um, so I think that the relationship that we have with everyday sort of objects that we just go and buy in stores like this one is changing a lot. We're going from a world where you have like, you know, these kind of products made by big companies that are on shelves or of big sort of shopping malls that are made in factories like this. Uh, this world is kind of changing a little bit uh, into a world where things are more and more made by machines like this. This is a 3D printer. It's a machine that prints objects out of plastic. And you can, you can, you can now, we can now get to the point where you can have one of these at home. So this printer costs about $2,000, and it's made by a company in New York called MakerBot. And so you have different models of these kind of machines, but this idea that you digitalize sort of the production process and you can make the machines closer to you changes the way you deal and you sort of relate to products. Also, we're moving to a world where you go online. This is an, a website, HTML. You just log in and you can choose to make your own toys. So you choose a kind of robot. You can completely customize the robot in terms of shape, uh, uh, the posture, whatever, the, every single component. Then you buy it and you get it at home as, a, as an object that you have created yourself. So clearly, the way we think about things and the way we design them and we make them is changing a lot. Uh, and also the way we perceive innovation is changing a lot. So this kind of revolution in the way we uh, think about products and the way they are made and designed is co was called by the economist the third industrial revolution. Well, I think that just looking at the, just this idea of digitalizing manufacturing is just one slice of actually what's happening there is probably a much larger revolution happening around the different stages of how you come up maybe with an idea and you sort of get it to the point that you can sell it to somebody. Like you, so I, I've outlined some areas like discovering about something and then learning about it and then inv maybe invent something uh, around that topic and then how when you invented something out, you fund that, you make it and you sell it so each one of these areas is changing deeply, and it's changing also because of there is this widespread feeling that there's more sharing going on. There's like more peer-to-peer -peer learning. People are naturally more helping each other. And so the innovation is happening not in the fancy place where everybody is dressed in lab coats, but it's happening at home. You know, you can invent things and you can bring to market completely outside of the kind of classic world of products. So there's different ways that people use to call this. And I think each one definition is kind of just a slice of the whole thing. So this openness revolution that's happening, somebody calls it indie capitalism, because we'll see that there's some people that have been made to, been able to invent a product design it and manufacture it without having previous experience in all of these things and then actually fund it and, and sell it completely outside of the standard path. And in general, there is this thing they call the maker movement. These people that do the things that you, I'll show you in the rest of the presentation. So I'll start by giving you an example based on a project I worked on. So, I teach in, a, in design schools, and one of the things that we face is the fact that when we design objects that are inanimate, like a chair, you know, there's a certain set of rules that designers use to do that, but when you move from designing the chair, which is the classic design product, into something that interacts with you, like some of the installations that we saw today. So a lot of the products that we saw today, they interact with people, they interact with one another. So when you design those kind of products, you can actually, you cannot use the classic way you design an inanimate object. You have to start prototyping all these behaviors. You need tools in order for you to experience what is the right direction. So the same way that you make sketches on napkins, 
what is the equivalent of making sketches on napkins with electronics? So this project, Arduino, is a project I started working on seven years ago uh, with some friends of mine. Uh, they are spread across the world, and we all teach in the same sort of interaction design field. And, um, and the idea is that we wanted a tool that would be very simple. This is a small computer the size of a credit card that's designed to be the brains of interactive objects, and it's designed in a way that you can actually try to teach it to almost anybody with no technology, experience in technology or previous understanding of electronics and software. But there's also one twist. So we took the design of this circuit. This is a picture of the software you use to design electronic circuits. It's actually a German software called Eagle. And one of the features of Eagle is that it's free up to a certain size. So there's a lot of people that design electronic circuits with this tool, and they share it online. So we decided to share all the projects, all the design of our um, board, of our little computer, so that people could make one themselves, so they can build upon what we did. And at the same time, we decided that we wanted to try to make it as easy as possible that even a kid can use it. So this, this kid here is called Silvia, and she has some videos you can find on YouTube, and she teaches other kids how to use Arduino. And also, the idea is that um, what happens if you start sharing all this knowledge, you try to teach people about this, you try to change the language, and instead of being incredibly technical and incredibly precise, you become a little bit fuzzy, but you become more understandable by everyday people. So, for example, this is the Arduino website. We started to build up this online community where we shared dozens and dozens of tutorials of like, you know, you want to build something that interacts to human touch, no problem, here's a tutorial, go through the steps, and, and you'll build something. So, what happened here is that slowly, over the years, we saw that this openness, this invitation to share, made people buy the product or make it themselves, learn about something, and share online what they learned. So, so we thought, okay. And this created an interesting movement where people can, this is one of my favorite examples of what you can do when you can sketch with electronics. So this guy had two cats, one was sick, the other one was healthy, so he wanted to make sure that just one cat was eating the right food and the other one wouldn't eat the food with the medicine. So he built this by using an old CD player, some tape, some LEDs, and a small sensor that detects a chip in the collar of the cat. So this is interesting because somebody has a need, has a problem they want to solve, but they just put it together at home. And then after they do this and they share it online, maybe they realize that there are thousands of people that have the same issue, and they would love to have one of these. And then it becomes an invention. So I'll show you some, some other example of what people do. Like, for example, this is a thing called Arducopter. It's a, it's an helicopter, it's a model helicopter that's powered by Arduino. It's uh, put together by a community called DIY Drones. There's also a little video of this helicopter flying. So this was put together as something fun that people can do, and it became essentially um, a platform that other people started to build upon. So there's, for example, people who are studying how you could use helicopters like this to deliver uh, medicines in villages in Africa, because this flies by itself. You program it, you tell it where to go, and it just goes there. Or people have built these tools like this one. This is a glove that interprets the sign language and is able to speak the words and display it on the LCD display. And again, this is interesting because they are taking different electronic parts that have been developed by the community around Arduino to simplify each stage of dealing with electronics, and they sort of put it together. It's almost like kind of a Lego type thing that you put together all the elements and you build all these crazy projects. Or, again, this is a plant that tweets, like in the first, uh, the first speaker managed to, was talking about the MIT. Actually, no, this, you can do this at home. And, uh, and there are... 
There is this, there is this perception that you need like fancy people to do all of this. No, you can do it yourself. There's like, you know, 13 year old Chilean kids who have built something like this that alerts people that there's an earthquake coming. And, or there's like, sillier projects like this one, this analyzes the Twitter feed of a family and visualizes where every member of the family is by using Twitter. <laughs> or, so it's simple, silly, but it, you know, in a way, an interesting finished sort of object. Or more serious things like this one, this is a, one of the machines that you need in order to analyze DNA. Uh, this one is open source, but then they started to open source everything. So the software, the hardware, the construction of the object, every single thing about this device is open. So other people can take it, modify it, build upon it. You know, this kind of loop starts. Or this is a medical instrument that you use to measure the pH of uh, a substance. And again, this one is open source, was developed by a a researcher in, in Brazil, so it's designed to be reasonably precise, but cost only like $50, so that you can quickly build it in a, in a place where you don't have a lot of money to buy fancy equipment. So all of these different devices, they show that there's an activity going on of people doing things with these technologies and sharing. So there is this thing that Eric von Ippel in a way, uh, define uh, the, the democratization of innovation. So innovation is becoming widespread, and we are inventing things and faster than the big companies can do. There's even, you know, this applies also to other things like this project made, made it possible to find an open source version of every, every one of the 40 machines that you need to rebuild civilization. So the, 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 you know, there's a war, we don't have anything. You take this, you can rebuild these machines, and you can rebuild civilization. Or there's even people who are doing DIY biology. So they're basically doing the same DIY with electronics with biology, a bit more dangerous, maybe. <laughs> so let's look how this openness is touching the different areas I've described. Like, so now people can learn at home by looking at this magazine, like Make Magazine, where the sort of maker movement comes from. From instructables, you can learn about anything, from making beds to chairs to uh, electronic devices, everything is in here. Or you, there is this Udacity website where you can take classes that were taught at Stanford and you take them online. So this is the, the other self-driving car from California. And the guy who works on the project uh, is basically um, teaching how to do this. So this is getting to the point that some people are saying, wait a second, all these kind of courses that you take online, these badges that you gain by doing cool stuff on some online websites, they're starting to challenge traditional college diplomas because you can learn stuff that's really useful in a very short time, and you can get a job at a cost which is nothing compared to how much it costs, for example, in the States to get a college degree and then maybe not get a job at the end. So. And also there are spaces. This is a space that Arduino opened in Torino where people can come and they work with us and we share with them the laser cutters, the 3D printers, so they learn from each other live and they can learn from us live. Also the way we invent, there are now websites where you can download 3D models of objects. So if you don't know how to design a car, you can download a 3D model and you can start working out of it. Maybe with a tool like this, this is a 3D CAD that you can use by just going with your browser on a certain server. Or there are tools that are making it very simple for you to design electronic circuits that even kids can do it. This is Fritzing, is a project uh, that comes out of Berlin. And um, it's pretty amazing how simple it is to actually design an electronic circuit with this tool and turn it into something. At the end of the process, you press a button, the file comes to Berlin, they make a printed circuit board, and they send it back to you. And um, also there are these online stores where you can buy all these electronic parts, but also there are now these places like Alibaba where you can actually get in touch with the factories in China so you can buy the same LCD screen that Apple is using for a product. So you can skip the whole sort of, you go direct to the, I mean, even Amazon now sells screws. You know, there's like <laughs> this website where there are like thousands of screws. So, you know, like making your own stuff is starting to become incredibly important. How to fund? 
There are now websites like Kickstarter that a lot of you will know that you go there and you say to people, I want to make this product. Who wants it? And then these people, they made this watch that talks to your mobile phone. They prototyped it with Arduino. And then they went on Kickstarter and they said, I want $100,000 to make a few of these. They got $10 million. This is $10 million, no question asked. You get 68,000 customers, you make the product, you sell it to them, but you don't sell them a piece of your company. They just buy into the idea and they believe in you and they do it with you. Or there is another website called Indiegogo, which is similar. For example, this group of people are trying to get money to make this device called the drip clip that basically uh, can be used when um, it's a medical device, but essentially it's open, it's low cost, uh, it can be implemented in uh, developing countries. So, you know, you buy into the idea, you don't buy a piece of the company. Then making, there's all these places now like Shapeways where you send them a file and they will print an object out of metal, clay, I cannot believe it's not rubber, you know, <laughs> this kind of, and there's all these crazy materials you can apply. Or Ponoco, they call themselves the personal factory. It's another place where you send them a file and they laser cut it. They will laser cut it in the place that's closest to you. So if you do it here, actually they will send the, the file to a place in Berlin. They will laser cut it and sell it to you. And also you can buy this printer. This is Ultimaker. It's, a, it's, a, it's an open source, again, 3D printer that uses Arduino as his own, as the heart. It's made in Holland. And so one of the cool things about this maker movement is that we can make stuff in Europe. Arduinos are manufactured in Italy. Crazy idea. You can make electronics in Italy and sell it to the Chinese. <laughs> how, you know, how crazy is that? So, so regardless of all the, you know, while the politicians talk, there's a bunch of people in Europe that are actually doing stuff. They just, you know, say, okay, no, it's, I don't care. Well, you know, they're doing stuff. And again, the last step, selling. So there is a website like Etsy where you can actually put your creations online and they basically create a place where you can sell to a community. Or the last thing I want to show you, this quirky is very interesting. If you have an idea for a product, but you don't want to sort of go through the process of making it all yourself, when you go to this website, you propose the idea, and you work with the community online to develop your product. So for example, this guy had this, this idea for a power strip that can be bent. So he worked on it with the community online. They got to the product where it was ready. They decided to make it. They started selling it for $29.99. And then this guy, in about... In a few months, actually this one is a little over a year, he made $289,000 in royalties out of this. For having an idea, developing it with people online, and then having Quirky took over the, the rest of the, the work and selling it. So I think that, you know, the next step is success. <laughs> <laughs> so I think... You know, I think what I wanted to show you is that there are a lot of opportunities where you can stop thinking, what am I going to do, and actually take your ideas further and make them without fear that it's too complicated. There's people who are doing it online, and you can just look at, look at there and say, wow, and just do what they do. And so, you know, go out and make something. Thank you. Thank you, Martin.